In this lecture, we're going to look at the different things that make up a good acid. So, before we talk about acids and bases, we must define what acids and bases are. Well, if you want to learn more about the various types of definitions that exist between acids and bases, check out the link below. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the bronsted lowry acid-base concept. So, according to that definition, acids are defined by their ability to donate an H plus ion while bases are defined by their ability to accept an H plus ion. So what makes a compound X a better acid than compound Y? Well, stronger acids are better at donating that H plus ion than weaker acids are. And stronger bases are better at accepting that H plus ion than weaker bases. That means the reason that compound X is a better acid than compound Y well, is because compound X releases that H ion with greater ease compared to compound Y. Now, three things make up a good acid. Bond strength, polarity of bond, and stability of conjugate base. So, how strong is the bond connecting the uh, H ion and the atom in the compound? Well, suppose you're holding somebody's hand and you're holding their hand tightly with a good grip. Well, then the other person will not be able to let go of their hand that easily. However, if your grip is weak and you're not holding it tightly, then that person will be able to let go of their hand. The same way that weak bonds will release the H plus ion with greater ease. So whenever you have a base that comes around, that base will be able to take away that H plus ion if the bond is weak. So weaker bonds equals better acids. So let's look at the polarity of our bond. So how polar is our bond? Let's examine a CH bond in a methane and an HCl bond in a hydrochloric acid or HCl. So the strength of these bonds is relatively the same. So if we strictly look at part C, the bond strength, we will determine that our acid strength is the same. But that's not the case. This is a much better acid than our methane molecule. So why is that? Well, we have to look at the polarity. Remember, uh, uh, polarity comes from electronegativity. And the greater the difference in electronegativity, the more polar our bond is. So let's look at this guy. The difference between electronegativity between the C atom and the H atom is smaller than the difference between the C Cl atom and the H atom. And that's because this Cl atom is much more electronegative. That means it's going to pull the electrons toward itself. So the density will not be equal. Whereas here it will be equal, or pretty much equal. Therefore, this section of the bond will be weak and so when a base comes around it will be able to pull away this H, uh, H atom with greater ease. Therefore the more polar our bond the more likely that it will break and release that H plus ion. Finally let's look at the stability of conjugate bases. Now if you forgot what a conjugate acid and base is check out the link below. Now we're going to explore the difference between chloric acid and hypochlorous acid. So if we look at the polarity and the bond strength, we see that this HO bond and this HO bond are identical. And that means, according to polarity and bond strength, these acids should have the same strength. But experimentally, we know that chloric acid is a better acid than hypochlorous acid. So let's examine why. This has to do with conjugate bases. Let's look at the conjugate base of hypochlorous acid. Well, when this H dissociates, it creates a negative charge on the O atom, creating this guy here. Now, this guy can be resonance stabilized by the formation of a double bond. And this creates a negative charge on the Cl atom. So we have two resonance stabilized states. Now, let's examine the conjugate base of our chloric acid. Well, this guy is resonance stabilized by three states, in fact four states. I'll show you the last one in a bit. So this negative atom can be distributed to this oxygen and then this oxygen. 
and, and that happens when this guy forms a double bond, displacing this bond, forming a negative bond here, and then this lone pair forms a double bond with this uh, bond, displacing this uh, lone pair, creating a negative charge here. In, a, in fact, a fourth resonance stabilized state exists in which three double bonds exist and the Cl atom has a negative charge. So, we see that resonance stabilization is good. Whenever we have more resonance stabilization, that means we have a more stable conjugate base. So this guy will exist and it will be more likely that it will exist than this guy. And therefore, chloric acid will, more, will be more likely to go this way, to lose and associate and to form this state than this guy. This guy will be less likely to dissociate because it's only stabilized by two resonant stabilized states or its conjugate base is only stabilized by two states versus four states in this case. So once again, the more stable our conjugate base is, the stronger our acid. That also means as acid strength decreases, say from going this guy to going to this guy, the strength of our conjugate base increases. In other words, this guy will be more likely to accept an H atom and go to this guy than this guy because this guy exists by itself in a more stable state. If you have this guy and this guy, this guy will be less likely to take an H atom and create chloric acid than this guy. 